Hey everyone, this lesson is on the anatomy of the forearm and today we're looking at the muscles and the tendons of the forearm. So learning any anatomy can seem very daunting but if we break it down into pieces it will help us better remember and better understand and that's what we're going to do today. So we're first going to break down the forearm into anterior and posterior portions. So we're first going to look at the anterior anatomy of the forearm. So the anterior muscular anatomy of the forearm is actually in layers. There's actually four layers of muscles and we're going to look at layer one here first. So if you think about you looking at your left arm, so this is a representation of your left arm as if you're looking at it, there are actually four muscles to remember in layer one, so the most superficial layer. So from left to right, those muscles are pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis because it's along the radius, Palmaris longus, it is the longest and has the longest tendon. And the palmaris longus actually leads to a palmar aponeurosis at the palm, so that's easy to remember as well. And when you're looking at, the, at your own left arm, the one on the right is the flexor carpi ulnaris because it runs along the ulna. So when you look at these muscles, you can actually see them in your own arm. So if you were to push your thumb against your pinky finger, you can actually see a protruding tendon, and that's actually the palmaris longus tendon. So an easy way to remember palmaris longus is that it is a long tendon that leads to the palm. And for the flexor carpi radialis and ulnaris, just think about where they are located. The flexor carpi radialis is along the radius. The flexor carpi ulnaris is along the ulna. Now another way to remember it is, and another way to actually locate these muscles is to take your right hand or your opposite hand and put your fingers, your forefingers, across your arm like I do in this picture here. And you can see PFPF. That's about the prox, about the approximate location each of those muscles lead. So PFPF, how can we come up with a way to remember this? Well, an easy way to remember this is think about pass, fail, pass, fail. So from left to right, as you look at your own arm, pass, fail, pass, fail, pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. So that's an easy way to remember that. So if we were to remove this layer of muscle into the next layer, layer two, we see that there's one larger muscle there, and that is the flexor digitorum superficialis. And you think about digitorum. Digitorum is because it leads to the digits in the hand, and superficialis is because it's, it is superficial. It is in layer two. So moving on to layer three, we see that there are another two muscles under um, flexor digitorum superficialis. These two muscles are flexor pollicis longus. The pollicis longus, uh, pollicis, means that it runs to the thumb. And the next muscle is flexor, flexor digitorum profundus. Digitorum, again, because it leads to the digits, and profundus actually means deep. So profundus means it is deeper to the flexor digitorum superficialis. In layer four, we have one lone muscle, and that is the pronator quadratus, which is near the wrist. So when we're looking at the anterior forearm, we see that there are, um, there are patterns to muscle names. They're all flexors. None of them are extensors. And we can see that depending on the layer in which they are, and depending on what they do, we can think about what they might be called. And we'll go through a summary of these muscles later. Moving on to the posterior forearm, so if you think about looking at your right arm, in the first layer, in layer one, there are many muscles actually, there are many muscles, and looking at, in this schematic, if we go from left to right, we can see that the first one is the brachioradialis, the second, extensor carpi radialis longus, again, uh, this one is along the radius, so it's along the radius, and it's long, the next one is extensor carpi radialis brevis, so it is a shorter muscle than the extensor carpi radialis longus, but it still runs along the radius. The next one is extensor digitorum. This one leads to the digits of the hand, 
And the tendon of extensor digitorum is actually the common extensor tendon. Another one is the extensor digiti minimi. It is a smaller muscle, but also leads to the digits. And then finally, we have the extensor carpi ulnaris, which again runs along the ulna. So when we look at this again, we see that the ones on the posterior forearm are extensor muscles. There are two extensor carpi muscles that are radialis muscles, but there's only one for the ulnaris. The extensor digitorum is, is the extensor muscle that actually leads to the digits of the hand. So I know a lot of this is going to be difficult to remember, but try to go through this lesson a few times to kind of get a better grasp of the muscles in both the anterior and posterior forearm. Moving on to the uh, layer two, underneath all of those muscles, the supernator is the first muscle, then the abductor pollicis longus, which has a tendon that leads to the thumb. That's why we see pollicis in the name. We have another muscle known as the extensor pollicis brevis. Again, this one leads to the extension of the thumb and pollicis again for thumb and brevis because it is a shorter muscle. We have another one that also leads to the thumb and it's longer muscle so it's called the extensor pollicis longus. And these two muscles, the extensor pollicis brevis and extensor pollicis longus, lead to a sort of depression in your hand when you extend your hand and that depression between the two tendons of those muscles is known as the anatomic snuff box and in, inside the anatomic snuff box is the scaphoid bone which is very important and we'll get into that in another lesson and now the final muscle in layer two is the extensor indicus now if you're to look at your own hand you stretch out your right hand you'll see you could actually see the anatomic snuff box so the anatomic snuff box, again, is surrounded by the tendon of the extensor pollicis longus muscle and the tendon of the extensor pollicis brevis muscle. And that area, that depression, is known as the anatomic snuff box. And again, that's important because that is where the scaphoid bone is located. And we can find that in some patients if they have had a fall on outstretched hand, they can get an injury to the scaphoid bone and we can put pressure in the anatomic snuff box to see if that elicits pain. And that's a way to check if the scaphoid has been damaged. So just to summarize what we learned in this lesson, so in the anterior portion of the arm, from the, from the superficial, or the most superficial layer to the deepest layer, so if you think about looking at your arm on a side view, the top layer, the most superficial layer, again has the PFPF, Remember, pass, fail, pass, fail, pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. In the second layer, you have flexor digitorum superficialis. In the third layer, you have flexor pollicis longus and flexor digitorum profundus. And in the deepest layer, you have pronator quadratus. So another way to, to think about this, and another, another way to help you remember is that in the the most superficial layer, we have P for pronator and palmaris, and in the deepest layer, you also have a P for pronator as well. So the P's are in the most superficial and deep layer, whereas the flexors are all in um, the top three layers and not the deepest layer. So hopefully that helps. So lastly, looking at the posterior portion of the forearm, again from superficial to deep. The most superficial layer has again a lot of muscles. Um, one is the brachioradialis, the next one is extensor carpi radialis longus, the next one is extensor carpi radialis brevis, the next one is extensor digitorum, the next one is extensor digiti minimi, and the next one is the extensor carpi ulnaris. And again that's in the most superficial layer on the posterior side of the arm. And in the deepest layer beneath that is the supinator, the abductor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis brevis, the extensor pollicis longus, and finally the extensor indicus. Anyways guys, that was a quick lesson on the anatomy of the forearm. This is my first lesson on anatomy, so I'm, I'm hoping that this video was helpful, and if it was, please like and subscribe. Please comment to let me know how I can improve these anatomy lessons, or if you want to see anything, and 
Again, as always, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.